Welcome to episode 250 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host, but I have a guest today, and his name is... Miles, his son. Miles, his son, is his name. (laughs) (laughs) Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. All right, so we're recording this. It is the day before Thanksgiving, and everything's kind of died down here in the office, and Miles is in the other room. He works here uh, for Automotive State of the Union, one of my companies, and he edits. And it's just kind of like a moment when there's only a few people in this office. And I was like, I have to record a podcast. I'm going to go grab Miles because we can do a podcast right now. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You know, I think the only other show you've ever been on 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 is when we were in the car. Yep. And you were filming. You asked me like two questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. so Miles is 16. He is homeschooled, which means I kind of was. I'm like done yeah, at this point. He's kind of done. So Miles is kind of done with school because when you're homeschool, you can get ahead. And Miles has just always been diligent to do his work. And before we knew it, we're like, you're kind of done. So he just started his junior year of high school and he's only got one class that he needs to take. So he's taking some college courses and he's working, editing 20, 30 hours a week. And he's just living the life. I thought it'd be cool to bring you on the show today and talk about some things that are part of pop culture that honestly you've brought into my life because you know your attention to what's going on in YouTube and influencers, it's given me in a window. And if you're a parent, you understand that you kind of have this level of um, a window into you know the younger world when you have kids because they're always talking about things and doing things like that. So um, I'm gonna have some, actually some of these things I brought into your life too. So I have okay. some items yeah, yeah. here that I'm gonna share and we're just gonna jam on these pop culture items first. Uh, first and foremost, I am gonna pull up a V friend. So V friend, this is <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, you know, I follow him a lot. I was part of his mentors program, recently released an NFT project called V friends and has turned basically characters that embody certain traits. This one is a vinyl toy that he did in a collaboration with Toys R Us or Macy's gratitude gorilla. Um, I also have a deck of Uno cards, V friends, Uno cards in collaboration with Mattel. And then finally, a really cool looking box of uh, collector's cards in a collaboration that he's done with Zero Cool. So, Miles, when you think about V Friends, yep. do you, do your friend, are your friends into V Friends? No. I've None never heard. I brought V Friends to them. I've never heard them bring it up on their own. Or okay. Anything. So, in the 16 year old crowd, V Friends isn't a thing. Um, as far as what you know about Gary and V Friends and the NFTs, What's your take on on just the whole ecosystem, what he's doing? I think that it's got like crazy good potential, especially since it like veers toward kids and adults at the same time. Um, anything that doesn't have an age niche is us- is usually pretty good. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Uno and stuff like that, I feel like is a great place to start, especially like little collectibles we, and figurines. We um, play Uno at our house. Next one up is this guy. I'm holding a Mr. Beast vinyl figure. Actually... Here he goes. That's little, how you're supposed to display it. Little, I know. That's how it. I'm supposed to do it. I got it in the cover. Um, Miles actually is the one that introduced me to Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast, now the most popular YouTuber. And uh, you were an earlier adopter than I was, but I was a pretty early adopter. Do you know? So he's got, what, 113 million followers now? Yeah. we. Um, Where do you think we dropped in on that? We introduced him about, about I, I know I said 3 million the other day, but it was more like maybe like 10 million. That's pretty good still. Yeah, after I went back and checked his subscriber count in 2018. So we were we were in around 10 million. You were in before I was for sure. You introduced me. So um, explain what what from your perspective what Mr. Beast does and why you think he's popular. Well, he emerged from philanthropy, or at least what really kickstarted his. He did kind of extreme stuff. Yeah, like self ex- self torture, right? Yeah, like extremism. sitting in the same chair and counting to a hundred thousand. Was that his first big video that popped? Yes, um, things like filling up a backyard with Orbeez after it rains. Oh, these so little that things that up. expand, right? Yeah, just doing a bunch of like stuff that no one would normally be able to do or do on their own. Mm-hmm. I feel like is what he excels at, and giving so much money away is something that not a ton of people can do um in an entertaining right, now, way now he does it at scale what is what is your ages like your age group and your friends like what do you how do you like perceive and kind of interact with mr beast everyone loves him no one really has an issue with mr beast everyone yeah like everyone will say i know who mr beast is everyone will say he's like he gives away tons of money um anyone who still watches him really likes his stuff he makes really entertaining videos. Do people try to make videos like him that you know of? Like friends, friends? He's got an editing style that has impacted 
a lot of people like sub, the way he does subtitles. How, how would you? Yeah. How would you explain? Explosions. How would you explain his editing style? It's like intentionally raw. Intentionally raw. That is perfect way to put it. Yeah. So yeah. it has. He, for example, will not cut the green screen off of an explosion when he uses it. Or he will, he only records in 1080p as well. He doesn't record in 4K or anything. Oh, really? Intentionally, yeah. Because? Because he wants to keep it more raw. He said that on a podcast, Oh, if it actually. looks, so if it looks too polished, he starts to feel like, uh, I don't yeah. think people are going to connect with it as much. Exactly. Well, just because it looks unintentionally or intentionally raw, I, it's still very intentional. Yeah. So yeah. just the jokes and the informality of his videos are what make him so special because for the number one YouTuber, you would kind of expect them to be a little more polished. Yeah. Even though he doesn't like, I mean, he has other channels like his reacts channel, which he spends a lot of time or he, his team spends a lot of time editing yep. and make really high quality. But his main channel actually is pretty raw. All right. So here, let me give you this next thing. So I'm holding a box of Mr. Beast bars, which here he can hold it. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a chocolate chocolate bars that he released what do you think he's doing with the chocolate um he's trying to diversify into any type of brand he can the chocolate was kind of step one or did he do um beast burger first i think, I think he did beast burger first yep he thought that food was one of the easiest things to expand upon because he could deliver it online and do the ghost restaurants and stuff like that mm -hmm. um so chocolate was just a way in which he could establish himself in the snack brand. Yeah. He said he's always wanted a snack brand. So it's just a step for him to move into places other than YouTube. Do you feel like you trust a YouTuber's brand more than you would just trust a random corporate brand? Yeah, because I can, if they're being personal uh, and posting so much about what they're doing yeah. and being so active online, then yeah, I'd 100% trust them more than an actual corporate brand. And so you have, you have what, do you have Mr. Beast clothes? You have, like, I do have some. What yeah. do you have? I have a hoodie, uh, two shirts, a bunch of stickers, bracelets. And when you wear yeah, that I stuff, why do you wear that stuff? Like when you wear it, what are you kind of like saying about yourself? Saying that I really appreciate what he's doing and I like, uh, the tiger is cool. <laughs> Oh, yeah, his logo. His logo yeah. yeah, the beast. Mm -hmm. Is it a tiger? It is a tiger. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, so there are definitely some parents that listen to this podcast that have teenagers for kids. So give us a, a little window into the teenage mind. For parents that, you know, have kids that are into, like, some of this stuff, like Mr. Beast or YouTubing or streaming, that the parent doesn't really understand what's going on, how would you, how would you um, encourage the parents to kind of empathize and connect with their kids, their teens? Just watch the videos. <laughs> Just watch the videos with your kids. If you have like a TV or something, put it on, watch it on the family TV because they're not bad. Like I don't think you'll ever find like kids don't watch crap. They know what's interesting to watch, but, or at least kids that's an age. interesting perspective. Is it? I've seen kids watch a lot of crap, but go ahead. But <clears throat> if you can watch the people that are influencing your kids, then you can understand better how your kids are thinking. Because also algorithms will work if you start watching the stuff your kids watch on a TV. Yep. Then the algorithm will start showing you stuff that your kids are also probably seeing in the algorithm. And so it can give you just a general idea of what your kids are into. Well, there you go, parents. A little window into the teenage mind of my son, Miles, who I'm very proud of. It's great to be able to work together. It's great to be able to enjoy this stuff together. Keeps me young. Thanks for being with us today. Hope it gave you a little perspective, a little clarity. And we'll see you next week. Next week. We can